Today we're going to be changing the transmission on this Toyota Camry. Now in this car you're going to drop the subframe down in order to get the transmission out. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the exhaust pipe. Two bolts over here and over there. Unfortunately mine does not unbolt from the back there because you've actually welded in a new section. So I have to drop the entire thing down. Up at the top here you got to remove everything from the top of the transmission including the battery and the air box. And move the battery. Remove the intake there. Someone doesn't know how to pour oil. Remove the air box. So we can get to the transmission shifter. Okay, there's a starter. Gotta get my toothbrush. Alright, so with that starter out of there, it kind of clears up some space on top of the transmission. I've also got all the wiring harness free here and taken off from all of the connectors over here. So that's going to stay with the vehicle when I drop the transmission down. And the next thing I need to tackle are these cooler lines down over here. There's a bolt that holds them together over here to this bracket, as well as the shifter cable that goes down to the park neutral switch over there. So in order to get this cable off, you have to unbolt it from the transmission. You'll be able to remove the shifter cable. You're going to remove the dipstick. So now I've got most of the stuff cleared up from the top here with the exception of the bell housing bolts. I'm going to go down and work underneath. Yeah, we're just going to drain the transmission fluid. Now I just flushed this transmission with the stop slip stuff and you can see the fluid is a hearty brown. Alright, so next up we are going to be removing these cooling lines here. Now when I'm dropping the subframe down, I'm going to try to keep the steering rack attached to the body just because I don't want to deal with power steering lines. So we are going to remove it from the subframe. There is a 19 millimeter bolt, which I've got my wrench on over here on this side. Now from underneath here, it's easier to see where the rack attaches to the subframe. So I'm going to remove that nut and then push the bolt through. And just like that, I can get the ratchet out from underneath, at least on the passenger side. Now here's where that rack bolt is on the driver's side. Things are a lot tighter because of the transmission being in the way. Now for the driver's side, you can definitely get a wrench on it and reach it from the top of the transmission over here. But even if you double wrench it, I'm not finding enough leverage to break that bolt free. So next I'm going to remove this 19 millimeter nut at the transmission mount over here at the subframe. And up at the front here we've got another transmission mount. I'm going to go ahead and break that 17 millimeter nut free. So over here I'm going to jack the transmission up. So here's my setup with the transmission jacked up, it actually moved forward. Enough for me to put a socket and a ratchet on that side and my 19 millimeter wrench on this side. And then I'm able to turn the nut pretty easily. So the next step is to remove the driver's side suspension so we can get this CV axle out of the transmission when we drop it down. We're also going to need to remove the end links on both sides here so we can get the sway bar out because that's also going to get dropped down with the subframe. We're going to need to remove these strut bolts over here, the end link over here. Also going to come under here and disconnect the tie rod as well as the lower ball joint which thankfully is a bolt-on style ball joint. I'm going to disconnect this brake line here and I can move that ABS line out of the way. Of course the end link is rusted on there so I'm going to use a vice grip to hold the ball pin at the back and take off that nut. Now I can remove the end link and go ahead and remove the tie rod nut. See if I can get this out of the knuckle. Now I'm going to remove the ball joint bolts. Alright, so the ball joint and tie rod loose. I got the axle to move in and out. The axle nut's actually a 30mm 12 point socket. It seems like it's stuck inside of the hub here. Alright, so I got a hub puller on there. Hopefully I can push the CV axle in. With a breaker bar, probably gonna strip the threads in here. All right, so this is giving me too much trouble to get this axle out of here. So instead, I might just pull it out of the transmission on the inner CV side. So here's the inner CV joint over here. Just gonna remove the clamp for that, and then pull the boot back, just like that. And then you can see the axle is now free. This boot needed to be replaced anyway, so this is a good time to replace it. So over here on the passenger side, I've disconnected the sway bar link, so the sway bar can move up and out of the way. Now down inside of here, I've also disconnected this power steering line that was attached to the subframe. There's also another bolt for it down at the front here under the AC compressor. And I've also removed this nut for the engine mount. And just like the other side, I've also removed the ball joint at the bottom here, which will allow my control arm to drop down with my subframe. Alright, so here we are underneath the vehicle again. Now we're going to attempt to start disconnecting the engine from the transmission. The first thing we got to do is pull these 10 millimeter bolts and get this cover off. Now I'm not going to try to pull this axle because it's secured to the engine at the back here and that gets pretty rusty. I'm going to see if I can pull the transmission out this way instead of pulling the axle out of the transmission because that one's usually a pretty pain to get out. Alright so with that cover pulled off you can see we've got a 14 millimeter bell housing bolt over here and loosen that up. Alright so all the flex plate bolts are out to the torque converter. There's a total of six of them. Next I've got to work on these bell housing bolts that hold the engine to the transmission. You can see that there's three 14 millimeter bolts at the bottom here and up here. So these two bottom ones here are shorter and the one near the differential here is the longer one. Now the bell housing bolts on the top are a lot harder to get to. You got a fairly easy one down way over here where the engine mount is. Then just above that there's another one over here. 
And there's another bolt over here just above the starter. However, if you move just past the starter, you can see I've got my socket with my wobbly extension on there with this long breaker bar to get another 17 millimeter bolt. In addition, there's one even further down from there. However, if you look up from underneath the differential here, you can see I've got my ratchet on there. And that's the hardest bell housing bolt to get to so far. All right, here we've got my setup. I'm going to be dropping the subframe down, but I need the engine to stay along with the transmission. So I'm using my engine crane because I don't have a brace to go across here to tie it to. So that's going to be holding the engine up while I drop the subframe down. Now down underneath here, things are a little bit more interesting. I've got one jack over on that side and one over here. I'm going to slowly remove the four bolts that hold the subframe to the body. And then I will lower that down with the jack. However, the only problem is that rack and pinion bolt, as you can see, is touching the sway bar. So I might have to remove that sway bar once the subframe is lowered just because I can't get to those bolts right now with it right up against the body. So I'm going to first remove all the 14 millimeter bolts and nuts that hold the subframe bracket brace on. I'm going to go ahead and loosen up that 19 millimeter bolt. So with the subframe bolts removed, I'm going to slowly start lowering that subframe. All right, so I was able to get out that bolt from the steering rack by loosening up the sway bar over here, just like that. And the rack is now free and that's gonna stay with the vehicle because I don't want to trouble the hydraulics or the alignment. The subframe itself is coming apart from the body over here. You can see it's already come off the transmission mount over on this side. Now same thing over here on the passenger side. The rack is free to move and that's gonna stay in the vehicle. I'm gonna try to see if the sway bar can move around and come out with the subframe. And there you have it, I've removed the subframe. I'm looking under the car, it looks like I broke something in the power steering because I've got red fluid leaking everywhere. So the next step is actually to remove the engine from the transmission. You can see there's a slight crack here starting to form. That's gonna pry here. All right, so here we are underneath. You can see it's half separated here. It's really just that axle back there that's kind of holding it on. So I'm just gonna keep jiggling it until that axle breaks free. And there you could see the transmission has been removed, dropped it straight down, quite literally. That there is the passenger side axle that was giving me trouble. Trying to line this thing back up is going to be a real pain because you have to line that up and then rotate it to line it back with the bell house. So unfortunately the line that got severed was our high pressure line going to the power steering rack. It just can't take that much movement when I drop the subframe down and it was super rusty. Oh look, we've also got a valve cover leak in the back here too. Now overall, given the amount of extra labor it was just to take off the transmission and leave the engine, I think it's actually worth it to drop the engine, transmission and subframe together. Even though you will have to disconnect your coolant hoses going into the hero core, the ones going into the radiator, the fuel lines, the evap lines, and of course drain the AC and disconnect your wiring harness on the inside. I still think that's probably easy easier than doing what I did here in order to get this off. It's also a really good time to change any leaky parts and clean off any other parts. While I'm back of the engine, I'm going to remove this flex plate just to check on that rear main seal to see if it's leaking. And just like that, you can see that there's a very slight leak starting to form at the rear main seal, so this might need to be replaced. Now over here at the rack, I was able to remove the small pipe here that goes into the rack and also remove it here from the high pressure hose. So I think I can probably just get away with replacing this piece and reuse that high pressure hose. Now I just need to remove this pinch bolt over here that holds it to the steering shaft, the tie rods on either end, as well as one return line over here, and then I can drop the rack down. Now after a lot of wiggling and jiggling, I was able to get the steering rack out. I had to take it off from inside. I also took off the return line over here. So now the subframe and steering rack is out. It's actually a good time to clean it from all the oil and residue. Just gonna take some bright cleaner there and my brother's old sock and then wipe that down. And this is an excellent time to change out these control arms because the bushings are a little bit worn and you have to remove the engine and transmission mounts in order to get to these bolts. It's a really stupid design. So doing it in the car is a lot more difficult. I'm also going to be changing the sway bar bushings just because I have access to them as well as these end links over here. If the breaker bar will get it. Bro! There we go. These bolts are usually pretty difficult to get to while they're in the car. So I'm just going to remove that bushing there. I'm going to be replacing these bushings. I got these from Mevotech. Now the bushings comes in pack of two and they are specific to the trim. The SC obviously has a larger bar because it's for more sporting or handling. Now if you want you can add some grease to that just to make sure things move nice and smoothly and don't squeak. And I'll just pop that bushing onto there. The caps have an arrow on them. They have to point forward. Remember we've got to get the steering rack bolt in there so we're going to mount that up next. Alright so I got the steering rack in here. 
I'm just going to position that inside of the subframe and then I'm going to go ahead and put that rack bolt in there. So now that the rack bolts are in, I can put my sway bar on. Make sure you dip this in anti-seize so it's easy for the next guy to take out. And we'll go ahead and tighten that down. Now with the steering rack reattached, this subframe is ready to go back underneath the car. Now meanwhile back here, I'm taking the opportunity to change this O2 sensor at the back here. If you remember, we had a P31 code for it, and that's for the heater sensor. It is a very difficult job to do, especially when you have all that stuff in the way. So I had to jack forward the engine here so that it kind of swings forward, sort of away from those brake lines back there. I really don't know how you change this sensor if you still had everything in the car. Now while I'm here, I'm also going to be replacing this boot along with the clamp because that was leaking and that's why we've got grease slung all over this area on the driver's side. So once the circlip's removed, I can remove the tripod. I've got my puller on there. I gotta pull it off of this spline shaft. So I got the tripod off there and the boot. This here is the boot number that I'm using. It's from Mevotech. Now the kit itself includes these two new clamps. You got a tube of grease as well as the boot itself. Now these clamps do require the special CV boot crimping plier. Now this does come with its own tube of grease that you're supposed to load up inside of this joint here as well as inside of the inner CV cup. But I'm going to choose to do that after I've got the transmission in just so this doesn't make a mess all over. Now I'm going to be replacing this rear main seal. I've used the seal puller. Kind of dug right in there. I'll just clean that up a little bit. And lubricate the inside of the seal. Alright, now you're going to take the new seal. Drop it in there. Just to give it a little bit of encouragement. So now that seal's in there. We're going to go ahead and replace the flex plate. Tighten these down. Alright, now it's time to mate up the transmission. Alright, so here's my setup for putting this transmission in. I've got the engine down over here, supported with jack stands. And then underneath here, I've got my engine crane with the transmission tied to it over here. And I'm going to use the crane to lift the transmission up to align with the engine. Now with the crane, I think it's a little bit easier than using the floor jack, just because you can kind of wiggle it around while it's kind of hanging up on here. I think this lower radiator hose might get in the way. So I did have to lower the engine a bit to get it a little bit tilted so it lines up with the transmission a bit easier. You can see down inside of there, I tried to line up the axle first. I'm just going to be using my jack underneath here to kind of get it in place. All right, so that was a lot of work, but lucky thing I tricked my brother into helping me. You can see I got the transmission fully aligned. I had to use two jacks, one under the front, one under the back, because it had to rotate as well as align. And I also used the crane above to kind of bring it up to the correct level. We had to use a pry bar over on that side against the frame rail to kind of chuck it in this way. And there's also a dollop pin up there to line up, as well as one on the front of the vehicle. But all in all, once it was able to kind of catch these two here, the last half inch gap that I had here, I just chucked a screwdriver and you got to make sure you push the torque converter all the way in. I'm going to go around and add all of my bell housing bolts. Now they were different lengths so make sure you label them the way I did here. Remember that steering line that I busted? I was able to find a new replacement tube that just bolts right on. So here I'm trying to align the subframe back with the body of the car. We have this engine mount over here that needs to line up with this engine mount. You can see also at the back here I'm using these jacks and these jack stands here to lift the subframe up. Meanwhile at the top here I've got the crane supporting the engine and transmission. Here's what things look like on the driver's side over here. You can see on the transmission I will have to get this guy aligned over here as well as all these subframe points with the point on the body here that has the nut. Just got to slowly jack up that subframe till I can get it to line up. So I've got my subframe bolts all caught up inside of here. Before I raised up the subframe, I was able to sneak inside of there and get my power steering lines connected. That is quite a difficult job to do. All right, so with all the engine mounts lined up, I can go ahead and release the weight of the engine onto the subframe. Now next I'm gonna be putting in the flex plate bolts over here. And then I'll just tighten that down. Alright, so back over here on the driver's side, I'm going to be replacing the knuckle and the shock here that I took out. That gave me extra clearance to get the transmission in. Now if you remember, I put a new boot on here, so I'm just going to use some of the grease that came in the kit. Back up at the top here, I've got the lower ball joint connected to the lower control arm and I was able to shove the axle back into the transmission. Alright, so you can see I've got the OEM style clamp on there that came with the boot. And I've got my pliers in there that have squished that connection. Now I'm going to go ahead and replace the brakes. I'm going to put the caliper on there. Now I'm also going to be replacing the ABS sensor. All right, I'm going to go ahead and replace the tie rod. And then put the nut on the bottom. I'm going to be installing some new sway bar end links. These are TTX brand from Mevotech. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and install that sway bar link. I'm going to make sure I drain out and blow out any additional fluid left in the transmission cooler. Just in case it contaminates my new transmission. Look how brown it is. You wouldn't want that going through your new transmission, would you? Now the next main thing underneath the car is to replace the exhaust. Make sure you use good anti-seize on these bolts. 
And we'll just slowly lower the car down to the ground. So now that the car's back down on the ground, we can start replacing all the electrical connectors and everything on top of the transmission. We can start to replace these transmission coolant hoses. I'm going to replace the dipstick. Now the park neutral switch over here has these two bolts. I actually had to change this over from my old transmission because the plug was different. Now these bolts are elongated so you can actually adjust it. So if it doesn't go into gear properly, you can adjust it according to where the position of the manual valve is. I'm going to make sure that the cable works. To reinstall the starter. All right, now we gotta just run all the wiring harnesses. This one goes down to the transmission solenoids, and then this one goes down to the park neutral switch. And then we've got one for the speed sensor over here. And there, I've got everything buttoned down. But before I put back the air intake, I'm gonna start the car just to make it move back and forth to make sure my park neutral switch doesn't need any adjustment. Now I'm sure the transmission lost some fluid when we were changing it, so I'm gonna add a little bit more and then check the level when the vehicle is on. Now because I drained the power steering in the process, I also have to top that off. My Toyotas take ATF in the power steering fluid. All right, so I'm gonna bleed the power steering system by just jacking up the front and turning the wheel side to side. All right, this is the first start. What the heck? And it's gonna be the first start real quick. All right, it starts. And I just put it in reverse. Uh-oh, what's up with that? Drive. Okay, it goes forward. Oh, we go backwards, here we are. So I'm happy that it actually moves back and forth, so I'm gonna go ahead and button down the air intake and all of the other plastic pieces underneath. All right, I've got everything all buttoned down. The last thing we've gotta do is check the fluids before we can take it for a test drive. All right, so we're out here on a test drive and the car shifts absolutely beautiful. I do have to fix the crooked steering wheel, but other than that, all the shifts are really smooth and nice and I get all my gears. All right, so there you have it. I have the car all cleaned up and ready for the road. This was definitely a big job and a lot of labor to do and obviously not worth it for a car this old. Now make sure you follow me on Instagram to find out what the next car video is going to be and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Just like this one. <laughs>